How do I start up a cleaning business without actually doing any of the cleaning? So this is something that is entirely possible if you as a client have had a cleaner in the past or you have a cleaner clean your home at the moment, then you are in theory able to grow and scale a cleaning business. The key point is that you are one of your clients. You know what is required to get a good job done. One of the key things that people don't realize is actually the quickest way to build and grow grow a cleaning company is not by you as the business owner doing the cleaning yourself. The sooner that you can get yourself away from doing the cleaning and working on the business and focusing on how to grow your business, that will be when your growth really accelerates. So in this video, I want to take you through the three steps that you need to set up and grow your cleaning business without doing any of the cleaning yourself. So let's get started. So first of all, we need to find cleaning contractors 1099s and the way that I believe is the best way to do this is by actually hiring some cleaners to clean your property to clean your apartment to clean your home you can find these cleaners on Craigslist or you can find these cleaners on lots of different cleaner websites or maybe adverts in your local shops most of these independent cleaners will be 1099s you do not want to hire a cleaning company that employs their cleaning staff you want to try to find these individual cleaners in your area that are doing the cleaning ideally just by themselves or maybe they have one or two other cleaners that they have working for them so the first step is that in terms of setting up your cleaning business is that you need to find your first cleaner and the best way to do this as I said is to hire a couple of cleaners just to clean your home for you you know when you hire them don't say anything about telling them that you're looking to to set up a cleaning business and are they looking for more cleaning jobs at this beginning stage you probably want to hire five different cleaners you know maybe not necessarily cleaning your home for five consecutive days but certainly maybe every two or three days and what makes a good cleaner what makes a bad cleaner is it the tidying is it the, that cleaner's attitude are those cleaners on time do they do what they say they're going to do get a feel of what a good cleaner looks like and when you get to that position then you will be in a far better position to be able to figure out you know if you were a potential client at the other end of this clean would you be happy or wouldn't you be happy and the thing to do is that once you've got those first five cleans under your belt you can then you know if you come across a cleaner that you really like the look of you should have a chat with them you know as I said you know you just want to hire uh, 1099 contractors independent cleaners to begin with and have a conversation with them ask them you know are you do you have a full schedule you know are you looking for more cleaning jobs you know say that you were you know you're considering starting up a cleaning company and if they needed more clients in this specific area would they be open to, uh, to to having their schedule filled and if they are then that potentially can be the first cleaner into your business you know you'll obviously need to figure out before you have that conversation what you might pay your cleaners what you might charge clients for that and I have plenty other videos on my channel talking about pricing and how much you need to be paying your cleaners so do drop me a comment uh, if you want me to link to those videos um, as well so the first step is find Find your first cleaner hire five cleaners get a feel of what makes a good cleaner and what makes a bad cleaner and then have that conversation if you get to that point where that cleaner a good cleaner agrees and they said yes let's you know I would like more clients in my cleaning business then you can take it to the next step so step one is to find your first cleaner step two is then once you've got that first cleaner we need to find some clients for that cleaner and again I've talked about how you get your first clients into your cleaning business on other videos on my channel but really what I would do is I'm a big believer in going with the lowest financial risk whenever you're starting up a business and I believe that there are two primary areas that you want to focus on to get your first clients and these are the paper lead sites Bark and Thumbtack and the way that these websites work is that you essentially will see lots of leads coming in you know you will see uh, someone looking for a weekly service in this particular zip code maybe they have a three bedroom room property and they're looking for a weekly clean or maybe someone else wants a clean every two weeks they're a professional couple in this other part of town and what you can do is you can buy those leads from these websites and when you buy a lead let's say you, you pay $30 for a lead when you buy that lead you will then be able to get that person's phone number and that person's email and then once that lead is bought you can then contact that client and then try and close them on the phone try and get them to book in that schedule um, you obviously will need to go through the pricing 
as it, again, as I talked about on many other videos on my channel, the best way to try and close a client is by getting them on the phone rather than by email. So you can answer questions, you can justify why your prices are where, you, where they are, and then you can then try and get that person in a particular slot in your calendar, let's say Thursday at 9 a.m. this week. So Bark and Thumbtack are a great place to start. And the, the reason why I focus on those two, as opposed to any of the other channels, is that you do not need to have a website in place. You know, you just need to buy that lead, get on the phone with that person. You do not need to spend time or money creating a website. You do not need to create an LLC or get all your insurance in place. Ideally, you would want to get that in place. But I know that when you start up a business, money is tight. So you want to just see this stage, what the market is like. What is the demand like? To go to Bark and Thumbtack to begin with, to get your first clients. And then once you got that first client, book them in with that cleaner that you recruited who came in to clean your property in the first place. And once you have that, effectively, you have the first revenue in your business. You have set up and started a cleaning business. So what I would be doing is I would probably tiptoe and just book in maybe the first one or two or three uh, jobs with this new cleaner that you've got in. Make sure that, you know, that they're going to the jobs first of all. Follow up with all these clients to check how that, that cleaner has been doing. And if they've been doing a great job and they've got more capacity, then keep putting money into Bark and Thumbtack and getting more clients. And at this stage, you know, your first client and your first cleaner is getting full, or maybe you can see that, that you're going to fill their capacity, then go back to square one, focus and recruit your second client, uh, your second cleaner, go to Craigslist or go to any of these other websites and try and hire another cleaner to clean for your property. And ideally, what you want to be doing is probably having a steady stream of cleaners coming through your doors every few weeks, every few days to try and find that next cleaner. And again, rinse and repeat, go back to Bark and Thumbtack, fill that second cleaners schedule. And really what we're trying to do at this stage is to see if you as a potential business owner of a cleaning company are looking to pursue this or pull back away. Are you interested in really building a cleaning business? You know, at this stage, you will probably get a good feel of what it's like to speak to potential clients, close those potential clients, any demands, any questions they have. And on the other side, you know, what is it like to recruit your cleaners? What happens if there are any issues? Do you have any cleaners that are maybe late for jobs or how do they deal with bad feedback or good feedback? You'll get a feel of how it is to manage those cleaners and manage clients. And ultimately, this is really what you're going to be doing in the early stages of your business. You're going to be trying to manage both sides and your ability to manage both sides will have a big uh, drive on how you can grow your cleaning business. So let's say you get to the position where you are saying, yes, I want to give this thing a good go. I want to grow my business. I want to get more clients on board. I want to get more cleaners on board. And that will take us on to step three. And that's really starting to formalize um, your operations. You've decided at this stage, you want to give this a proper go. So that's when you need to set up your LLC. That's when you need to set up your insurance cover. That's when you need to set up your business bank accounts. And really, you know, whereas at the beginning, you know, we can just connect clients to cleaners and maybe we know the specific day of the week or the specific time of the day that, that those cleans will be happening. As you recruit more clients on board, as you bring on more cleaners into your business, then you will start to need to have a more formal um, process in place. You know, you can get to a certain level by just running your business out of Google Calendar, but you know, there'll be other things, you know, particularly on the payment side that you will need to figure out as well. Um, you know, you may be able to set things up where, you know, your clients will pay cash and then, you know, your cleaner collects the cash and maybe you meet your cleaner to, to collect, you know, your portion of the cash from them. But, you know, as is becoming more common in this cashless society, you know, you will probably need to think of a way you can take card payment and pay your cleaners by bank transfer as well. And this is where various scheduling software will become important. Again, I've talked about scheduling software in many other videos on my channel. Zenmade is a good one. Booking Koala is another one. Launch 27 is another one. You can simply type in made service scheduling software. And essentially what these softwares, a calendar, powerful calendar and a payment tool that allows for a seamless charging of your clients and paying for your cleaners as well. So point three is formalizing your operations. What do you do once you decide you want to give this a real good go? So those are the three steps. As I said, you do not need to do any of the cleaning yourself to set up and grow your cleaning business. If you have a good idea of what might make a good cleaner or a bad cleaner by putting yourselves in the shoes of a potential client, then in theory, you have the ability to grow your cleaning business.
business. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you want to formalize operations and grow your cleaning company quicker, check out this next video. This will give you a much clearer footprint and blueprint in terms of how to go from zero to $10,000 a month. And I go through the detail of which specific marketing channels to invest in, how to get as many clients as you can from those marketing channels, and ultimately how you scale operations. So anyway, have a fantastic day and I will see you on the next one.